In the unit on floors, I showed you how to create an opening or an aperture in your floor element. And if you recall, we first created the floor, then we edited its boundary and we added a closed loop inside the main floor boundary, remade the floor, and that had the effect of cutting out our opening. You may also recall that I said I didn't think that was probably the best method of forming your openings in your floors particularly when you've got the case of a multi-storey building and you want a consistent opening going up the full height of your building across many floors. So for example, a service riser, a lift shaft, a stairwell. We have another tool at our disposal. That is the shaft opening tool. And I'm gonna show you how that works now. So we've got a simple model with a number of repetitive floors stacked on top of each other. So I'm gonna to switch to a level zero floor plan. To find the shaft opening tool, we make sure we're in the architecture menu, look along the ribbon to the opening panel, and there we have shaft opening. As soon as you select that, you're put into sketch mode. You'll be starting to become familiar with the green tick and the red cross. So again, Revit is now expecting us to define a boundary Remember that draw palette, different options for how you actually draw that boundary. In this case, I'm just going to use single segment line. So this could be, as I say, a stairwell lift shaft. Doesn't matter what shape you make it, as long as it's a closed loop. And that's it. We've defined our opening or a shaft. Hit the green tick, switch back to a 3D view. Might need to just orbit that model a little bit to actually see inside. And if I deselect the shaft opening itself, it's still selected, you'll notice that it's formed the apertures through those two floor elements. Now at the moment obviously it doesn't go up the full height of the building and I'm going to show you how to do that next. I'm just going to go ahead and reselect the shaft opening. Now you can think of the shaft opening as an object in its own right, a void object. So if I hover over the model you can actually see the effect of the shaft opening, that is it's cut through the floor elements. But if I hover over carefully my cursor until it highlights and then select it, you can now actually see the object itself, the shaft opening. So you can think of that as a, as a void form. Now we've got two methods of setting the height. We can literally drag it in this view or any view in which we can see the shaft opening itself once it's selected. And you'll notice at the top and bottom, we've got two triangular grips. So if you're very careful and you hover over and grab one of the grips, you can drag the height of that shaft opening. If I let go up there, deselect, you can see our apertures now go all the way up on every floor. I'm just going to go ahead and reselect that, hover over, select it. Just like every other element in Revit, once you've selected the element, you'll see its properties in the properties palette. So if we look over here, we can set also set the level from the properties palette. So we've got base constraint. So at the moment it's going from level zero. It's got a base offset at the moment of 150 mil below level zero. So that makes sure that it goes down and punctures through the floor. Top constraint, at the moment it's unconnected. These are exactly the same parameters, or they work in exactly the same way as we saw with the walls. So a base constraint with offset and a top constraint with associated offset. So unconnected height, 23 and a half meters roughly at the moment. Let's actually control the height of this shaft opening and I want to send it up to a level I've called roof. 
and now it's adjusted accordingly. So I would suggest in live projects, you're probably going to want to control the height of that shaft opening by levels. So you're going to set up some key datums to make sure that that shaft opening always adjusts to the correct height rather than you having to manually go in, select it and drag it up or down. A common convention in architectural plans is to have some symbolic lines to actually show where openings appear in floor plans. So typically a pair of diagonal lines that cross over for lift shafts or service risers. We have the ability to add those symbolic lines automatically to every floor plan which is cut by a shaft opening. So I've just switched to level one floor plan. I could switch to any of these floor plans which is cut by the shaft opening we've created so for example let's just switch to level three again you can see there's the opening formed by the shaft opening object so i'm going to go ahead and select the shaft opening and you'll notice now on the ribbon there is the option to edit sketch i'm going to select that puts me back into sketch mode Remember, it's exactly the same process that we saw in creating the floors, i.e. we could now revise the boundary of the sketch if we wanted to. But what I want to do right now is add symbolic lines. So if you look up here on this draw palette, it's not a boundary line I want to create. We've already defined our boundary. It's a symbolic line I want to add. So I'll switch to symbolic lines. Got a choice of line styles, whatever you've got set up in your current project. I'll stick with thin lines as a line style. And I'm now going to add some symbolic lines. I'm going to keep this fairly simple. So basically I want those two lines to appear like that on every floor plan automatically where this shaft opening object cuts through the floor element. So I'm happy with the symbolic lines. I'm going to go ahead and hit the green tick to remake the shaft opening. Deselect it. So now if I switch to level four, level five, level six, and so on. Just note that these are symbolic lines and they're only added to plan views. So they're not part of the 3D model itself. So if we switch back to a 3D view, you're not gonna see those lines in the model. But any of the plan views that are affected by that shaft opening, these symbolic lines are added automatically. I mentioned before about changing the shape of the boundary of the shaft opening once you've created it, but I'll just do that very quickly again. So we go ahead and select the shaft opening. We have the option to edit sketch. And now I can adapt the boundary as appropriate. I'm just gonna take the end off there and add an arc in instead. We're happy with the new boundary. Hit the green tick to remake the shaft opening and have a look in 3D and there is our revised shaft opening. A really neat feature of shaft openings is that they only cut through certain categories of Revit elements. They obviously cut through floors because we've just seen how that works. They also cut through ceiling objects and they cut through roofs as well. But apart from that, they don't affect any other element in your model. So in this example, you can see that I've added a staircase up the full height of the building. There is the effect of the shaft opening that we previously created. So you can see the shaft opening object runs the full height 
of the building and does indeed cut through the floors. If we had ceiling objects in there, it would cut through those too. If we had a roof on the building and we extended the top of the shaft opening through the roof, it would cut through that as well. But notice how it leaves the stairs intact. So any other category of element apart from floors, ceilings and roofs are not affected by shaft openings. So if you create a lift shaft, you can have all the guide rails and the lift car in there. Likewise, as we've just seen with stair towers and those objects will still be displayed and not cut through. And that completes this unit. To get the most out of this training material, please take the complete course online at bimscape.com. Here you will find a complete learning management system that allows you to work through the course at your own pace. Comprehensive written tutorials provide additional information to that found in the training videos. Mark each unit as complete as you finish it and move on to the next. At any point you can return to any of the units you have previously completed to go over the material again. If you'd like to take this course online, please visit www.bimscape.com forward slash Revit for details.